Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be playing again with the Flash Forge 85X. We're gonna do a couple of upgrades. This video is not sponsored by Flash Forge. I spent my own money and I've got a couple of upgrades for this printer. And today specifically, we're going to add two things to this printer that I think if you own this printer, probably very, very likely that these are upgrades that you're gonna to wanna to do yourself. First, we are going to add the light kit to shed a little illumination on the camera module. So we'll get both of those installed and without any further ado, let's get into it. For the light bar installation, I'll be following along Flash Forge's installation instruction, which are located on the wiki. And I'll put all of the information down in the video description to that. They do have the link in those descriptions for this part right here. You do need to print this. This is a holder for the light bar. So first thing you're going to want to do is to navigate to uh, that website, download this, load it up in Flash Forge Slicer program, and go ahead and get that printed out. Once you have this printed out, you're going to need to install the light bar in this holder. There's a little slot that this is gonna slide into right here, and then there's a catch over on this side, and hopefully we can just push that down all right, there we go. That took a lot of force. So that is now securely held in place so we can move right along. The next step is to insert the assembled LED module into the mounting holes on the printer. These will line right up. In my case, I did use double-sided tape just to hold everything securely. Here is the view of the printer with the assembled LED module from the front. This bracket sits right on top of the printer behind the LCD screen. Do make sure that you remove power before removing any of the panels. Remove the IFS wire followed by the rear cover. In order to remove the rear cover, there are six screws along the perimeter and two screws next to the poop chute that will need to be removed. Route the power cable for the light bar over the top frame bar towards the front of the printer and then secure it in the small notch on the right front vertical frame. You may, just like me, be tempted to route the cable from the back side instead of around the front, but I do believe there's a reason that they don't tell you to do this, and as you can see here, the cable will get pinched uh, by the tool head when it moves fully forward. Next, follow the ribbon cable and route the LED light module cable through the same channel. I'll put a link in the video description of this cloth tape that I'm using, which is commonly used for electronic installations. Bring the LED light bar cable back through the channel, pass it through the opening in the rear of the printer, and plug it into the yellow socket in the middle of the PCB mainboard. Replace the two small screws next to the poop chute, and then replace and tighten the six screws along the perimeter of the back panel to secure it in place. Be sure to reconnect the IFS. Once the machine is powered on and fully booted, the lights should automatically turn on. You can control the light using the Flash Forge Slicer or the mobile app. Although it's not part of the official instructions from Flash Forge, I think it looks a lot better if you cover those wires up in the front. Again, I use this fabric-based tape that uh, is used for electrical applications. Trust me, it works and it looks a lot better. All right, that is one project done and we still have one to go. But before we tackle the camera installation, I wanna thank the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. If you've got a project coming up that requires PCB fabrication, CNC machining, or advanced 3D printing, consider coming to PCBWay.com while they have a tremendous Christmas sale going on. You can enjoy all sorts of discounts and look at the number of coupons they have available now. Get up to $435 in coupons. The Christmas sale is going on until December 31st, so act quick. PCB way, PCB prototype the easy way. All right, now for the camera install. Here we have the camera itself, and we'll go ahead and remove this little protective film because it's probably easier to do now than later. A couple things to note. You do want to make sure that your cable is coming out of this top hole. Mine was already routed like that. And then there's two other things that we want to pay attention to. 
you do have a screw that is included with the camera and that is going to thread right into this hole and then we have this little tab so let's go over to the printer and get this installed first things first make sure to power off your printer place the camera in the inside frame and make sure that the little peg slides into the rectangular hole and then place in your screw and tighten it be careful not to over tighten as this is soft plastic note the threaded hole below that is not the correct place to install this camera. Using firm pressure, slide the screen toward the spool holders to release it from the catches in the back. You can see from this view here where those catches are located. Fold the screen down, being very careful to not damage the ribbon cable, and plug the camera into the port on the back of the screen. Once this connection is complete, return the screen to its original position and push it away from the spool holders to lock it back in place. At this point, I would recommend using more of the tape that I mentioned in the light install to secure the cabling for the camera on the back of the frame. Now you can go ahead and switch the printer back on and now we will activate the camera from the front touchscreen. On the touchscreen, press the gear icon and then in the top row of icons at the furthest right, you will see a little camera icon. You can now switch on the camera and switch on your video options. All right, folks, there you have it. Two quick upgrades for the FlashForge 85X. We now have some beautiful light, and you saw that camera. It may not be the highest resolution or highest frame per second camera, but I can tell you that this was the only printer that I had that didn't have either a light or a camera on it, and now that problem is solved so I can remotely monitor this great little printer. If you'd like to see further upgrades for this or any other printer, please let me know down in the comments. If you found this video helpful and you'd like to see more like this in the future, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, and go ahead and hit the notification bell so you know when I drop new videos. As always, I've enjoyed the time that we get to spend together here on the channel, so let's keep on learning, burning, printing, and growing together. Take care, everyone.